Welcome to Spot On, a show where we feature Spot On music talent, their history, and their work, including a roundtable discussion that's very informative with a variety of music industry veterans. And now, I know you'll agree, this is Spot On. Welcome, I'm Dan Blackman. We're here at our intimate roundtable. And I am joined by music industry veteran. He's a composer. He has written so many songs. He has a million stories. Mr. Billy Terrell, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Dan. It's a pleasure. We were talking about the Apple Jacks off camera. Yes. And my first question for you is, how did the Apple Jacks project first come about? Well, it started Dave Apple, the, the iconic uh, writer-producer, uh, going all the way back to the 40s. And then, of course, on to the 50s. Uh, during the rock and roll era, Dave Apple put a, a number of bands together, but the one that stood out was Dave Apple and the Apple Jacks. They had a couple of hits, um, uh, Mexican Hat Rock, and of course, Rock of Conga was a good record. And uh, so uh, he, uh, as time went on, uh, he had a, he was one of the grandfathers of early rock and roll. Uh, all through the '60s, he never lost. The point is, he never lost his jazz roots because in the '40s, yeah, you know, in the '40s, he uh, he wrote charts for Benny Carter, Father Hines, a lot of big bands, and that was really Dave Apple's roots. And then he graduated on. He evolved into the '50s, through the '60s, and then of course in the '70s. Uh, he was iconic with Hank Medris, uh, produced all of the Tony Orlando and Dawn records, uh, the early records from Melissa Manchester, Robert Johns, Lion Sleeps the Night. So here's an icon that came full circle a number of times with different genres. And as music was evolving, interestingly, so was Dave evolving. And he was someone that really influenced you oh, big in the time. music industry. Oh, big, yeah. huge. And the first time I met Dave was with uh, Joe Renzetti, my dear friend and iconic arranger. He arranged a lot of songs that I produced, and he also got the Oscar for the Buddy Holly story. He nice. did all the music. So uh, uh, he was having coffee with Dave, and I was so excited to meet Dave. And we became friends in 1970 and remained friends. But in the early 60s, Cameo Parkway records were the records that I bought, and those are the records that inspired me to get in, interested in being in the music business. And and I, ironically, they were all Dave Apple songs, a Man and Apple. So meeting him in the 70s was, uh, was a, a thrill. And we had stayed friends, and finally in the, um, about four years ago, really, and I had, he had called me over to his house, because we didn't live far, and he would ask me to listen to certain things and make comments on certain uh, mixes of the demos and what I thought of this, what I thought of that. And um, I started uh, working closer with him about four years ago. Uh, and I convinced him that what we should do is, this music is so organic in nature, we really should go in with live musicians and record you know, so you get the feel. I said, Dave, you got a great feel, but let's get those live musicians in there and make these upgraded demos, basically, that would be good to pitch to other artists and for film, television, commercial. So that's really how it started, and we worked. He was pretty old. He was in his late 80s already, so we had to limit our time, but we did a lot of work in the studio over about two and a half years, until he, unfortunately, toward the end of his life, it was very difficult. But we, it, but he, it evolved into a, a very exciting uh, a group of uh, uh, songs, and all of a sudden, it, it didn't sound like demo records anymore. It sounded like these are marketable uh, tracks. So uh, that's what that's what it evolved to. And then I said to Dave, uh, you know, why don't we recruit a young group? And let's go all the way back, and let's develop a new generation of Apple Jacks. What I thought was great, the, one of my favorite quotes was that Dave Apple heard music in his head 24 hours a day. Oh, he did. He did. 
Yeah, Dave Apple was all about the music. I mean, he wasn't, fortunately, he never had to be concerned about the business. Uh, he was always just, he's a very humble guy, quiet guy. I mean, I've met a lot of people on my way up in, in the last 52 years, over 52 years. I've met, I've met a lot of producers, a lot of artists, uh, work with a lot of really great people. But uh, Dave Apple was unique, very unique. Rest his soul. Uh, he had to be home with his family at night. You know, he never got involved That's in great. any of the running crazy, and uh, he he never felt compelled to throw any televisions out uh, off the balcony <laughs> at the riot hut. Not, Not like, glue any anything no, to the ceilings or. <laughs> he, he, you know, he stayed in hotels, but he never felt compelled to rearrange the furniture just to give people a hard time. Uh, that wasn't Dave. Dave was just a straight up guy who was all about the music. And uh, just just an absolute marvelous talent. And music did go in his head 24 hours a day. And the melodies that he came up with were just, they just stayed with you, just like his 50s music. Kids in Bristol are sharp as a pistol. You hear, you hear the guitar entrance, you know the song. He always got right to the point. And he did it with this project as well. And we talked about earlier how this has been cyclical. So he started out in jazz, went to rock, pop, and came back to jazz. And he mentioned a song that's on the CD yes. that I love because it's so visual. Tell our viewers what that song is. Well, it's, it's a song called The Man on the Sliding Trombone. I love it. I love the title because you could, you could imagine that well, immediately. Well, the point is Dave, Dave played guitar and he also played trombone. And uh, as we're going through his vintage tapes, we found a cassette tape of a track that he had recorded with the band in the early 50s. It's a studio recording with, a, with horns and, and Dave on the, on the trombone. It's a marvelous record. So I said, Dave, that is just unbelievable. We ought to put it on the project as a bonus track. And it's, it's just, just great. So we really should listen to so it. So you're going to see a commercial a little later on about this CD that you could get. But the man on the sliding trombone, I know you want to hear it. Let's hear it right now on Spot On.
the man on the sliding trombone. Love it. And I love all the images of, of Dave Apple. This is Dave Apple. You said you found this recording. Yes. And that was Dave Apple to give you a little taste. Oh, yeah. Last yeah. segment, you mentioned about how what you were talking to Dave Apple that you imagine we need uh, players to come in. We need people to do it live. Well, at that point, once, once it was evident that we had a commercial project and it wasn't just demonstration records, um, especially in this genre, jazz or contemporary jazz, they're calling, uh, you know, it's known as smooth jazz, but nowadays it's more contemporary jazz. That, that's the genre. And um, you, you have to have a band. You know, Absolutely. In order to, yeah. I mean, the radio stations aren't going to play a studio record in this genre. So I had suggested uh, Vic Stevens, the drummer, who was our recording engineer, brilliant drummer, plays with everybody. I've been recording with Vic for 20 years. And uh, I said, let's let Vic be the drummer, but let's recruit. Because actually, uh, during the demo process, we, we brought in a number of young musicians, number of uh, different variations. And, and interestingly, most of them were students at the University of the Arts in Philadelphia. So when I got the idea and I said to Dave, and Dave started to buy the idea of a young, inspired, new generation of Applejacks, I said, you know, we should really recruit students. Uh, it's a very fresh band, and if we do it from the University of the Arts, we could make it interchangeable. And that's when it evolved to, of course, unfortunately, Dave passed away in November 14, and from uh, the last year uh, leading into a few months ago, uh, I was working with the estate with his daughter, Roz, and... Um, trying to figure out the right marketing plan for it, something different. Sure. And um, I felt that, uh, wow, if we're going to have these University of the Arts people, then why don't we start a Dave Apple? Because part of, part of what we're trying to do here with this project is keep Dave's legacy relevant. Yep. Because he was so quiet. He's done so many great things that nobody know, knows about. They don't know him. And I said, let's, let's keep him going his legacy and perpetuity, we could do it. And uh, so what we did is uh, I suggested, let's go to the University of Arts and let's talk about a Dave Apple Fund. So we were able to do that. We, we set up the Dave Apple Student Musical Instrument Fund, uh, which the estate's going to donate a portion of all the proceeds from sales of CDs, uh, merchandise. We're gonna. We already signed the band to WBA Entertainment in Nashville, uh, and they're gonna start booking the band. So we're gonna all the merchandising and that, and all the proceeds. A portion will go into this fund to buy musical instruments for prodigy students that have a lot of talent, but they may not have the money to buy the best instruments. What was Dave's reaction when you said, how about a new generation, new Apple Jacks with your music? Well, he, at, at, he was intrigued. You know, he wasn't, you know, he was a quiet guy. He, at first, he, he, he was, he, it's just like going in with the, with the live musicians. He was a little bit standoffish and then, I said, well, would you try a few? And then once we get, once he heard the results. That's what I was gonna say, he, once he heard it. Yeah, once he heard it, he came along. Because one thing about Dave, which I found very interesting, and uh, he was very protective of his ideas, rightfully so. Because sure. in his head, he had it down. And I knew early on working with him, I said, you know, the, I never even said a word, but I knew instinctively that not going to be able to push Dave and out of his realm, out of his area. So I, over time, I was able to make these small suggestions. And as he bought into certain suggestions, we got closer creatively. And he trusted me more and more. Uh, and uh, I was really happy. There was one day in the process 
about two and a half years in that I was so happy because I, I sensed that he was actually waiting for me to make suggestions, that I had earned his trust. Yeah. Yeah. And it was almost like going, it was almost like climbing a mountain. You know, you reach the top of the mountain because yeah. this guy that you've admired your entire life, who basically was a mentor without even knowing me, uh, that day it was quite clear that all of a sudden I became the mentor. Hmm. And it was just the greatest feeling to earn his trust. So he, uh, at that point, it was easy. Then we, uh, unfortunately, he, he didn't live long enough to see the, uh, the band come to fruition, but he knew, he knew what it was going to be. Well, when you're a composer or a musician, oh, yeah. you hear it in your head and you know what you want it to sound like. Oh, absolutely. And if it comes out the way you sound like, then you're very happy. Well, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have it any other way. And, and, uh, and I would have never pushed him anyway, uh, because when you're looking at a man that, that's done all the things that he's done and such an icon over, the, over four or five decades, uh, it would have been foolish to challenge that. It wouldn't have worked anyway. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but I found it very interesting uh, how he... It was in his head, and he went there, and he put it down. And the melody, and every melody, meant something. It all meant something, and, and that's when I got the feeling that that this project really could resonate. You are going to be able to order this CD very shortly. But there's another song on here yes. that I want you to tell me about, Salsa Inter Philly. Yes, interesting song. He wrote this marvelous song, and uh, I, uh, one of the early suggestions that I made uh, with that particular production, even though that's one of the last songs that we recorded. I said, you know, Dave, his horn chart that he wrote was so, it, it sounded Latin to me. And I said, suppose we bring in Hector Rosado, who's a marvelous uh, Latin uh, jazz percussionist. And uh, Dave's title was Jazzioso, uh, which I didn't challenge him on. I never really cared for it, but it's Dave's music. So once we got the Latin percussion on it, and we used a larger horn ensemble, it really took on the Latin flavor. And I said, to Jay, I asked Dave, I said, would you mind if we change the title of this song? Because it does have a Latin jazz flavor. And I suggested Salsa Philly, because the whole Philadelphia connection. Sure. And uh, he said, no, I like that. So we did it. And this track is just, I, I find it to be fascinating. So it's. Let's hear it. South of Philly. <laughs>
Salsa Philly. You know, Billy loves it. <laughs> I, I love I love that Latin rim oh, rhythm it's, in it's there. A, it's it's just unbelie- it's unbelievable. Very catchy. If you listen to uh, WBG or and these <laughs> any of these uh, 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 jazz pub, public yeah. uh, public radio Radios, yep. uh, jazz, uh, it's what you hear on there. You know, it's it's just a marvelous, marvelous record, and uh, I'm so happy, and I'm so happy for for Dave. Uh, as a matter of fact, we had the unveiling uh, at the cemetery recently, and I and I took the CD and and uh, put it. It had some wrapping, oh, and I stuck it in there, and I said, "Dave, we did it." <laughs> I love okay. Dave Apple. Hey, and it's great to become more of an historian when oh. it comes to music oh, and yes. and learn about things, and hope oh, yeah. that you enjoyed learning more about the legacy of Dave Apple, the early days, and how the new Apple Jacks came about. I'm Dan Blackman. This is Billy Terrell. We'll see you next time. I'll be here. Right on, spot on. Mm-hmm.